I've been um, campaigning against um, the recognise for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from pretty much the get-go. <laughs> As soon as I worked out what they were doing, I think 2011, um, and basically I've had to learn, um, be self-taught, and learn about legislations and how the government is, um, what they're doing with their constitution to basically deny us our human rights. Um, it's been a big learning curve. Um, as well, I've had some kind of, um, I've had education, I suppose, that's helped me uncode it and basically having a cultural context to, um, and an understanding of my own culture helps me understand what I don't want the government to do, kind of thing. So what I wanted to do is, we have to kind of understand sovereignty to, so we can understand how the government is robbing us of our sovereign rights. And so um, in this presentation, I've got on the circles, they're red, black and yellow. I'm using the colours from the Aboriginal flag. And so um, we've got three elements of sovereignty, which are the three elements of our culture. And these circles are pretty much from a tribal aspect, I suppose, because I'm married into a tribal family and that's how they understand um, culture from a tribal perspective with your, your land born people and that's what sovereignty is. Sovereignty is the three aspects. You've got to have your land, you've got to have your people on the land and you have to have a law and that's what makes sovereignty. So basically for those who are taking this information back to their community and people don't understand sovereignty, it's just culture. That's all it is. And it's just a flash name for it, a white man's name. But it's our culture and that's sovereignty. So the government are basically um, trying to take this off us. And they are taking it strategically out of these three points, land, law and people. So this is section 5126 of the Australian Constitution. It's actually a British Act of Parliament. Australia doesn't own anything. It relies on the Queen's sovereignty for this legislation to e exist. She is a foreigner, so they're using a foreigner's law on this land, which is illegit, anyways. But anyways, they press on. So this is prior to 67 referendum, where the, the Parliament shall, subject to this constitution, have the power to make laws for the peace and so forth. And in green, um, they had to make um, laws with respect to the people of any race other than Aboriginal people. So what they did in 67, I'm not going to go too deeply into it because Serene's going to cover this in more detail, but um, we just need to understand 5126 to press on. So what they did was basically they just wiped out other than Aboriginal people. So there was a presumption that they could make laws for Aboriginal people because they wiped out yeah, that line, other than Aboriginal people, that they couldn't make laws for us anymore. And so what happened was there was a few court cases, high court cases, and this particular case here, Kuwata versus Bjorki Peterson, and basically the high court judge said that 5126 doesn't have the powers to make laws for our people, basically. So 67, that law precedence plus two others, come along and just stamped it. 5126 doesn't have the power to make laws for our people. So therefore, the Australian constitution cannot make laws for us. The government has no jurisdiction or power to make laws for our people right now as it stands. And that's why the 67 referendum is now a failure. It was also a sham and a lie, and Serene will go further into that as well, because they were promoting that they'll give us rights. They were fighting for their rights to have jurisdictions over us, that was all. And thank goodness it didn't work because we wouldn't be in the situation that we are in today. Yep, so it's a blessing in disguise, 67 referendum blundered, but they are coming back next year to do a clean up job on us in 2017. And this is why it's very important that we understand what are they doing 
and we need to pay attention to the legislation that they are going to shift. So we don't have time to go into all the legislations and I know time is precious, but this is so important. So just really, you know, beg that you just stay focused with me while I have a look at a couple of legislations that I believe are very dangerous for our people. So basically, um, the main one, section 5126, this is their main one they want to change. Guarantee you they want this. They want to fix the 67 referendum blunder. They want to become a power to make laws for us. So all these Aboriginal Heritage Acts and all these Native Title Acts, they're illegit. We don't need to endorse them because they do not hold the power to make laws for us. Yep, really important we know this. Okay, so the Australian government are attempting to acquire our land. This is what their agenda is. This is what they want. They want our land. They want to mine it. They want to make money off it. They don't want us to have the financial benefits of it. That's really what it's all about. It's about greed, yeah? So they are attempting to acquire our land and they want to have jurisdiction over us as people. They want to make laws for us. They want to control us. Um, and that's what they want. They don't want to give us rights. They really do not want to give us rights, and I'll prove this. But basically, um, this is from the ALRC report initially put together in 1977 when they had time to realise a decade that the 67 referendum really messed them up. So they, here it says here, there are no treaties concluded with Aboriginal group and no arrangements were made with them to acquire their land or to regulate dealings between them and the colonists. So this is their constitutional experts acknowledging that they had made no arrangements via a treaty to acquire our land. So they have acquired our land illegally, literally. So the kinds of laws, what do they want to do once they get the power to make laws for us under 5126 when they aim that right at our heads? And also I just quickly mention in a hurry that the High Court judges had acknowledged that Section 5126 was a racist law. So they're not only going to... Um, he, he had these recognised stooges that um, saying, oh, we're going to fix racism. No, they are entrenching racism and they're aiming at the very known racist law right at our heads. It's absolutely evil what they are going to do. So they want to have human control, they want our land, and they want not only that, but not to, do they just want our land and they want to control us like robots. They want to own our absolute cultural ownership. They want our cultural law. They want to own our law and to the point that they want to own every thought that comes out of their head. They want to claim copyright and intellectual property over our artistic ideas, cultural ideas. This is how extreme this is. So there's the how. So I'm just going to quickly hone in on people. Recognise. This is really important to understand this word. Really, really important to understand this word. The Constitution kind of has to recognise things for it to have a law for. Okay, so I get that that's important that they need to do that, but they are wanting to recognise us without the rights attached. They're not saying, we want to recognise your rights to your land. No, they just want to recognise us. So recognise in the Black Laws Dictionary means to enter into recognisance. So the British law explanation of recognisance removes a person's rights and places them into a bond. So this is where we've got to get very astute, okay, because especially with us blackfellas, we have our own interpretation of English and what we call, it's another dialect, it's called Aboriginal English. These guys who are writing this constitution are not using definitions from Aboriginal English. They are using definitions from the law dictionaries. And in the law dictionary, recognise means to enter us into a bond and for our rights to be taken from us. That's what recognise means. So when they have, when they want to bring us into recognisance under their control, these are the kinds of laws that they will end up throwing at our people. This is what the Commonwealth are doing in the Northern Territory already paperless arrests, where they can just pick you up off the street and arrest you 
for nothing and place you into a cell and incarcerate you. And they're doing that in Northern Territory. And the last deaths in custody that we know of that happened in, in the Northern Territory was from a paperless arrest. That be, and because there is no paper trail and because it's not going through the custody notification service, no one's being alerted that someone's in custody. And when, if you know, something goes wrong and they pass away, people aren't even notified that someone has passed away. And guarantee you there's a lot of, um, you know, corporate kind of black fillers that want to go with recognise. But at the end of the day, we give the power to the police. The police are rednecks, right? They don't go and do a coconut checklist on the streets. They are not that smart, right? They just see black skin. They don't go, oh, that one, you know, they're a nice little sellout, let them go. They just see a black fella on the street and they know that black now had no cultural training, these guys. No cultural training. So they're not going to go be nice to the coconut and then bad to the grassroots. They're going to do a basically wash of this kind of power across all of us. We're all at risk, the whole dang lot of us. They will basically, we know this is coming, basics card will come straight across the country. They are pushing it in places where they can manage to get a consent from so-called, or some elders that are being deceived that it's a good thing. They're saying, oh, you've got a lot of alcohol problems in your area. We'll bring that basics card in. Basics card is not a solution to addiction and high trauma. We need to have rehabilitation and healing camps and, and these kinds of cultural recreations to be able to heal, not an enforced basics card. So I took some photos from the intervention sort of signage in the Northern Territory and it says prescribed area. So what happened with the Northern Territory intervention, they um, disabled the Racial Discrimination Act and then from there, from the Racial Discrimination Act, then they basically, under duress and by force, leased their lands out. So they took the land first. Once they took their lands, then they threw the laws over the top of their heads. So the lands are very linked to the power of the law. So, and then in the when you go into the areas of where they had the interventions, they had this big sign up and it was called prescribed area. And prescribed or prescription is the pathway how sovereignty is transferred. Yep, so very important to be very red alert on prescribed or prescription just as much as recognise. Um, just a quick history when they removed our children under the Aboriginal Act, state legislation, they entered the people who were taking them into the mission homes and so forth. They, they, the Act gave them permission to bring our children into recognisance. They recognised them, they brought them into recognisance. And the Act allowed them to own them as property up until they were 18 years. Now, the, this is very dangerous. We recognise coming at the 2017 referendum, this is not capped at 18 years of age. They want to recognise us to the day we die. They want to own us as property. Okay, so that's the people, yeah? Um, the land, oh, this is going to be fast, the land bit. This legislation is not going to be amended because it's already sitting there as a trap waiting for 5126 to power up. So 5126... Is going to enable section 5131 that's already sitting there. So when the government basically holds the power to make laws for any people, which would be us eventually, that's what they want, then they have the power to take our acquisition, our land acquisition. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to do a swipe over our lands and they're going to take the whole lot. And Basically because if you look at Native Title Act or even heritage and so forth, they are powered up by the Racial Discrimination Act. Racial Discrimination Act is powered up by 5126. So once they start amending 5126, they start unpowering all these legislations anyways. Land rights, as we know, is down the gurgle, straight down. Land acquisition will slide across, straight across to the Commonwealth. They've also they've been making legislations amendments across the board in every aspect you can imagine. And they are preparing like for this massive swipe legislatively. 
So they've been amending the Heritage Acts. Um, they've even created a new Freehold Land Act in Queensland, where freehold is now not out of jurisdiction anymore, but coming into jurisdiction of the Crown. And they'll really power up once 5126 is, is transferred over. Um, and that's when we'll, we'll see the damage at its full capacity. Legislatively, they're preparing like a genocide, a massive cultural genocide. This is the most important aspect of this presentation today, is the law, our cultural law, and how they're going to hijack this through um, legislation, section 116A. So the, the legislation 116A, as it stands right now, the Commonwealth shall not make any law establishing any religion for imposing any religious observance or prohibiting the exercise of any religion and no religion test shall be required qualification for any office or public trust under the Commonwealth. So basically, that's what it is now. So if um, black people are saying, my culture is my religion, then it's kind of protected. And they know that. And so they're placing some inserts into um, section 116. And it's also the way that they are actually going to siphon our cultural law, our customary law because customary law is not recognised in the constitution, although it is, they recognise that it's a problem. If I walked into a courthouse and said my customary law, that shut down as fast as I would say sovereignty. Customary law, they understand that they are out of jurisdiction. I'll just quickly, before I go break it down, religion in the Black Laws Dictionary is applied with the terms of deed of trust. This is what religion means. And so it's an instrument to use in many states, taking the place and serving the use of a common law mortgage by which the legal title to real property. So basically it ties the culture to the land ownership. So I really want to unpack section 116A, the insert really, um, as fast as possible. So what they are adding into, um, into 116 about religion, they creating this pro prohibition of racial discrimination. And this is what recognise are going around saying, we're fixing uh, racism. We've got this little insert that says, prohibition of racial discrimination. Isn't that just lovely? But when you unpack it, it actually is the reversal of what they say they are doing. So it says here on subsection one, the Commonwealth, a state or a territory, shall not discriminate on the grounds of race, colour or ethnic or national origin. Well, that's nice and lovely, it sounds all good. Subsection two cancels out subsection one. It does not preclude the making or it does not prevent the making of laws or measures for the purpose of overcoming disadvantage annulating, which means make something better, um, the effects of past discrimination or protecting the cultures, languages or heritage of any group. So basically, they um, it doesn't... Subsection 2 is saying subsection 1 only prevents um, racial discrimination if it's outside the legislations that are aimed at us. And so basically, it's a, it, it's a disclaimer. They are intending to breach our human rights and be racially discriminative. So they've placed a little disclaimer in there, except for when we're doing our business with you. That's basically what that is saying. It's unlawful, it's just absolutely criminal. I'll go further into what it is, explain that in a minute. Um, who actually affirms this with me because I'm not a lawyer? I have found, luckily, Another lawyer that has basically uncoded section 116A inserts and he agrees, thank goodness. And so he says it is not proposed, section 116A, it is not proposed to eliminate racial discrimination from Australian laws and policies by the proposed changes to our constitution. Rather, and I'm sure most Australians would find this surprising, the proposed change to insert section 116A would remove safeguards and creates the risk of entrenching racially discriminative laws currently affecting Indigenous people, many of these laws being in whole part of questionable standing or necessity. There's another way of looking at this subsection two, and this is, this is where it starts going into codified. 
I'll look, I'll just read it out. Again, does not preclude the making of laws or measures for the purpose of overcoming disadvantage. Now, if you look at this grammatically, does is basically a verb, it's an action, not is an adverb, and it changes the next verb, it affects the next verb, which is preclude, which prevents. So you've got not, which is the adverb meaning negates. So basically, the verb and the adverb preceding preclude, it negates that purpose. So in other words, it's another little disclaimer that they're legislated that it's okay that we will make discriminating laws. So I just wanted to highlight that. That's very hard to pick out. And I actually placed this up on Vote No to Constitutional Change on Facebook. And I had a respected order jump on and go, I don't see the problem with this. And this is what the problem is. And I had to be very careful, you know, dealing with, especially with respected kind of elders on Facebook, not to insult their intelligence. Um, and you don't want to say, look, sorry, your comprehension skills aren't happening here. Check this out. So you have to be very careful. But what it is, is that they are using codified grammatic trickery. In, um, and so I had to sort of break the news as gently as I could that um, the verb and the adverb are cancelling out the, the next verb. That's the grammatic explanation. But maybe let's have a look at what another lawyer said. He's agreeing, you know. So just trying to break the news gently to our people that we are basically going to be cleaned up. But I've got to push through because this gets deeper and more uglier than this. This is just the icing, the tip of the iceberg. I'm telling you, like, what they are using is 116, and I have the proof, I found the evidence that they are using section 116A to actually hijack our customary law, our cultural law, and have a jurisdiction over it. But what I just want to quickly divert a little bit because this is, relates to section 116A, the insert, where they want to basically allow discriminative laws, this is what it's really saying, In um, once you uncode it, they want to create discriminative laws through section 116 for heritage and culture and cultural law and customary law. That's what they are saying when you break down all the jargon. And if we have a look um, at the... There's two heritage acts that have been amended um, in the last six months, um, and they're very dangerous legislations, and this is showing the intent of what the government want to do. And with Victoria, they basically... Um, they've amended the 2006 Aboriginal Heritage and they basically have changed the, um, in the amendment, they substituted ancestral remains with human. So they are basically claiming human, or human dead or alive, by the way. They are um, basically claiming the exhuming right to take a body out of the ground um, in part or in whole at their discretion. Um, and it's like, why would you want to do that? You know, like this is kind of sick stuff here. Like why do you need to take our bodies out of the ground in part or in whole? You know, it's really disturbing. They are also, through heritage, having um, the seizure powers to go into your home um, without a warrant under heritage. So this is kind of the stuff that they're up to. So this is really um, a massive breach no white people will be sub, um, subjected to the same type of treatment where police can go through their homes without a warrant, just Aboriginal people. Um, this is a screenshot from the Queensland government. I thought I'd screenshot it just in case they pull it down because they usually do that when I highlight stuff that the government's up to. So on, under cultural heritage, under the Department of Transport and Main Roads in Queensland, they are basically saying that they... Um, Again, they use the words recognise, the main roads recognise the significance of Aboriginal cultures and managing Indigenous. So they are basically saying we are now your managers of your cultural affairs. And they are basically saying this includes all materials that they will manage under Aboriginal, which is non-material culture, religious beliefs and folklore. This is how it links to section 116.
because that is a breach of our human rights. But 116 says, that's okay, you can breach their human rights. That's the insert, yeah? So that's where it links to 116. They're allowing them to make discriminative laws when it comes to our our folklore, our cultural law. You know how incredibly dangerous this is going to be. Yep, and then they want to take our memories and our skills and they want to take any practice that we do and they want to take our ideas. Our, so they want to claim copyright and intellectual property over every aspect of us. I've seen these statutes before. This is the old Roman Empire system. Yes, it is. What they do and what they've been doing for several thousand years is they seize 20 or 30 of the culture's scholars and they lock them up, yep. and they force them to redact the entire culture. In other words, write it all down. Yes. Once they've written it all down, they claim it as theirs, and they kill the people from the culture. So yep. they absorb everything. They know how to manage the land. They know how to manage the ancient systems, and they don't need the people anymore. They've been doing it for thousands yep. of years. It's a standard methodology. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll just quickly press on because I know Serene's got to get up. Um, in the Aboriginal Heritage Cultural Act for um, Queensland, it says, again, it, it's re reiterating, recognised, but unpacking it and saying it binds all persons, including the state, to the extent of their legislative power, which is pretty open. They can take everything. And, um, and also the place of immunity. Nothing in this Act makes the state liable to be prosecuted. Okay, so they basically want to have our full cultural law, manage our cultural law, our law business, every aspect of our culture, and then if they stuff up, which they will, they don't want to be prosecuted, hands off. Okay, so I'll just press on past that. This is the evidence of what I'm saying is um, basically supports me. This is from the uh, recognition of Aboriginal customary laws, ALRC report, 31. Um, so basically, what happened when 67 referendum blundered? They went, oh, we better get to the table and work out how do we fix this? How do we hold a jurisdiction over Aboriginal people? How do we own their cultural law now? You know. So they had all these discussions and they created this report. And so in this report, they identified um, that they needed section 116, if you can see down the bottom where it says in yellow, they needed their limitations over us, over our cultural law, um, was basically they needed their recommendations was to modify section 116. So when you get these gammon blackfellas that come along and say, we want to be recognised, we're a little activists, hello, the ALRC report come on with that, not with them. Yep. ALRC report want our cultural law. That's their gig. Yep. We don't want that. We want to own our cultural law because it's our birthright. Now, guess, this is where it gets very serious now. Why does, why, this is such a, um, a spiritual um, breach to our people. But what they are using is customary law. It comes back to customary law. When they remove children from the system because they don't really have the power to remove our children because of our customary law. So what they do is they, they place the mothers under duress and they say, you sign this piece of paper and we will tell you when you can have your kid back. But what they are doing, these mums are signing these pieces of paper going, oh, I'm on this contract to get my kids back. What they've actually signed was the jurisdiction for the district general to take the kid. That's all. And then basically they never get that kid back anyways. So that, that's how they're doing it. So with when they hijack customary law through section 116, there won't be this consent process and they won't be going to court so the judge will decide you've got to go to rehab and you've got to do that. They will just be able to take the kid and you won't have any right of reply. So we're already losing a lot of children and it will just speed up. Just incredibly. So they are actually removing, they will be removing our children through the pathway of section 116. And that's because of customary law. So 
I think I'll leave it at that because this just goes on forever. So basically, this is um, the three aspects, the law, the land, the people. I'll just get one more graphic up. Okay, I'll just quickly highlight this quickly. Why is legislation and the Constitution confusing? On this side here, this person is looking at four poles. One, two, three, four. On this side here, this person is looking at three. One, two, three. It's the same. It's an illusion. Section 116A, Section 116 is an illusion. It looks like many different things from different aspects when you look at it, but we've just unpacked it. It's codified. And this will go into supporting um, what the gentleman said over here. But basically the issue that I want to quickly raise is our people are expected to give consent to these kinds of documentation or to um, the constitutional recognise and say, yes, we want recognise, and they're not, they're not comprehending. It's trickery. We just have to unpack it to work out that they're actually legalising um, our cultural theft, our cultural appropriation, the removal of our children without consent and the full absolute ownership over our cultural law, like damn cheeky stuff. Can I, can I just, I'm sorry, I need to tell you about this. Yes. What you have so beautifully described is the legal doctrine called non est factum. Yep. That means they get you to sign a document, you think it's one thing, but it's actually another. Yep. And it, it unravels the whole document. And it's an act of fraud. Yes. If you spread in amongst the folks that these things are non est factum and say that to the official, once they realise that you think it's non est factum, they can't force you to sign it under any circumstances. Non est est factum, F A C T U M, particularly applicable when the person signing it is not educated or who speaks primarily another language. That's what the law tends to show. Unravel. Thank you so much. Six is major power. Yes. Is a little word in there. It's, I think it's in other measures. That means they have administrative control. Yep. And once they've got administrative control, the officials have complete power and they don't have to act in accordance with the law. And if they hurt you or commit a tort or any other wrong against you, you can't sue them. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you your report.